Welcome to my kitchen again. It's really cold out tonight, so tonight we're going to make chicken and dumplings. It's a really good dish for when it's cold out. And um, this morning, before I went to work, I put chicken in my crock pot, covered it with water, salt and pepper, and let it cook on low all day so that when I came home, all I have to do is chop up the chicken and I'm ready just to make my chicken and dumplings. So I have the stock that's left over from the chicken in my pan. I have it on high to boil, but I'm going to add to this enough water to make 10 cups of stock. So I'm using quart jars because that's about four cups. And I had probably close to three cups already in there, so I'm not gonna use quite all of this. And you can just kind of tell how much you'll need. And then you just heat that up. The chicken, when I took it out of the crock pot, I just pulled it apart with a fork and it's ready to go back in. And that goes in at the end. Now for our dough, we're going to start with two cups of flour. Now in my cookbook, it says four cups of flour, but that's because when I normally make chicken and dumplings, I make a really large amount of chicken and dumplings. But tonight there's just three of us, so we're cutting it in half. So we have two cups of plain flour. And to that, we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to mix that together real good. Just the flour, plain flour, and salt. And then to that, we're going to add three tablespoons of shortening. And you need to cut that in until it has um, like crumbles. And you can use a fork or you can use one of these handy little mechanisms for cutting in dough. But anytime that you're mixing shortening with flour and it calls for you to cut it in, all you're really doing is mashing it down into all the different particles of the flour. And the more you cut, there's a big chunk of shortening. We're going to get that cut up and it will start making little crumbles. So just keep cutting it. The amount of chicken that you want to use is just depending on how many people that you're going to feed. Um, I cooked more chicken than I need, but I can if I don't use it all, I can freeze it. I can pull it out for chicken tacos or chicken pot pie, anything like that. But when you put it in your crock pot, you'll just cover it with water and let it cook. Now just stir it around. See if you have any big chunks of shortening in there. You may even have to pull some off the fork. Oh, there's one. Really what you're doing is you're just getting it all even. Okay, and then to this we're going to add a half a cup of ice water. Now, these dumplings are what we call slick dumplings. They're old-fashioned slick dumplings. You can make fluffy dumplings if that's what you like, um, but you would not use this recipe because this recipe does not have anything to make the dough rise. You can also just use um, canned biscuits. If you want slick dumplings, then use the cheapest canned biscuit you can find and just pull them apart when the, water's, the stock is boiling and let them cook. Or if you like fluffy, dumplings, then you need to uh, purchase the buttermilk flaky biscuits. So now we're going to add a half a cup of ice water, and as you can see I had ice in this water just to get it good and cold. And we're going to stir that together until all the dough just kind of clings together. You don't want to overwork your dough. So we're just going to kind of stir it around. It's starting to get harder to stir. It's 
all kind of clinging together. And sometimes you might have to add a little bit more water to get the consistency that you want. But don't pour the water in because you'll end up with too much. What I like to do is just take my hand and just kind of sprinkle a little bit, little bits at a time until the dough is starting to form a ball. And then you have to get your hands in it to kind of see if it's staying together. So this needs a little bit more water because it's not quite staying together yet. If you've never made dough before, just try and think of um, Play-Doh. If you've ever played with Play-Doh, you know what that feels like. See how it's still kind of falling apart? That means we need just a little more water. It really clings to your hands. See how it's starting to form a ball now? I'll put just a tiny bit more, and that should do it. forming into a ball, we're ready to roll it out. Thank you. So we're going to sprinkle some flour out on our surface. Just kind of spread it out. Put some on your hands. Get your hands nice and covered. And then pick up your ball of dough. put it down on the floured surface and you're just going to press it down before you start rolling it out. Then you'll take your rolling pin which you also want to put flour on so that it doesn't get all sticky and then just roll out your dough. This dough doesn't have to be pretty because you're just going to be dropping it into your stock. But you do want it to be thin. Probably put just a tad more water on that. There. Now it's rolling better. To get it about, I don't know, quarter of an inch. And then you're just going to take a knife and just cut strips about an inch and a half wide. And then just take your strips over to your stock, which is boiling, and you just pinch off about an inch and drop it into the boiling stock mixture. So you're going to do that with all of your dough strips. Just drop them right in there. And then you're going to let that simmer on low for about 15 minutes. 
After these have simmered for about 20 minutes, you'll notice that they'll float to the top, and that's another way that you know that they are uh, almost done. But you want to add a quarter cup of butter and a quarter cup of milk. And stir that up and let it continue to simmer till that butter is all melted. And, and put in your chicken. So you just add the chicken back to the stock with the dumplings. If I'm making a large pot of chicken and dumplings, I will just cook a whole chicken in the crock pot and then just remove the meat from the bone and use the stock that way. But tonight I just used uh, boneless, skinless thighs and breast. And then you just let it simmer and you have chicken and dumplings. You can also make ham and dumplings and you just use a ham and a ham bone. And tonight we're going to have with that some um, coleslaw that's also in the recipe book. And basically it is just cabbage, chopped up a whole head of cabbage. And then you add three tablespoons of a light oil, like a canola oil, and a tablespoon and a half of white vinegar, salt and pepper to taste, and a teaspoon of sugar. Mix it all together and you have a really good coleslaw. So we'll have chicken and dumplings on this cold snowy night and our coleslaw. And I hope that you enjoy it.